this video is part of a series, be sure to check out the link in the description of this video for the full playlist. And we're looking at serial port connections. And today we're going to be looking at the Motorola Surfboard. This is model uh, SB4200. This is a pretty old cable modem uh, that I've probably had for over 10 years. I mean, I don't still use it. It's probably been in my garage for at least five years now. Um, but we're going to get a serial port connection on it. But we're really not going to be able to do much with it. I mean, we're not going to do much with it. You could do more with it. Let me. I already have it opened up here. And here is the device open. So as you can see, here's the main board, and then we have a power supply over here. If you're going to have the case open and plugged in, uh, be careful not to touch anything over here. Don't want you to get shocked. Um, and right over here, you can see uh, right here you have your Broadcom chip. And just to the corner of that, there will be uh, some connections here. Uh, there are no header pins. By default, I soldered on some header pins. But the connections go uh, when you're facing it and the Broadcom chip is upside down. From top to bottom, we have ground, your voltage, receive and transmit. We're not going to be using the voltage connection, just the ground, receive and transmit. And remember that receive goes to transmit on your serial device and transmit goes to receive. If you do it backwards, you'll get some gibberish on the screen or nothing at all. In that case, just flip them around, you have it backwards. Again, here's a closer look at the board and we're going for the set of four pins here, not the three pins or all these other pins. There's a row of four pins and again, uh, when the board is upside down here and you're looking at the Broadcom chip, we got ground, voltage, receive, and transmit. Again, this video is part of a series and in the earlier videos I go over stuff in more detail, but I'm going to be using Screen as my serial port connection software and I'm on a Lynx machine and my USB serial port connection device. I only have one, so it's dev, TTY, capital USB zero, and we're using a broad, broad rate of uh, 38,400. So I've got my device plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. See nothing at first because our um, Motorola modem here is not plugged in. By not plugged in, I mean the power I do have hooked up to serial. So you, you normally want to have serial port connection and your software running before you power up the device. That way you don't miss any important information during the boot process. Well, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. And again, be careful with the power supply that's right here. There we go. And the device starts to boot. Now, Looking at our screen here, again, we do get some useful information here uh, about the device. And we do have an option to press any key to stop auto boot. If we don't stop the device, uh, it goes a little bit further. It says starting at a memory location, and then we get nothing. We don't get any shell or really any other boot information. Now, unlike a lot of devices like this, this device is actually not running Linux. Looking back at the very first lines of the boot process, you can see that it says VxWorks boot, system boot. Uh, I guess VxWork, I'm not familiar with it, but I guess it's an operating system that used on small devices like this. Um, but I have read there are people who have gotten Linux booted on this device, and they all link to uh, images they made, but the links are all so old that uh, all of them are bad links. I wasn't able to get any images from the downloads. I'm going to unplug and replug this device back in and quickly hit a key on the keyboard to, oh, I was too late. Let's try that again. Plug it in, press a key. Okay. So now, lower down here, you can see that we are in the bootloader and we can type in help to see what our options are. And unlike uh, on our other devices that are running uh, U-Boot, I don't believe this is U-Boot, doesn't say it's U-Boot anywhere, I'm assuming it's the V-Works uh, system, uh, boot system. I'm gonna hit enter, and we do have two options here. To boot from flash, which would be a normal boot, or boot over a network. Uh, so if you were able to create or find an image for this, Theoretically, you should be able to boot the image over the network and then flash the system. I have not gotten that far, but I thought I'd show you the information that I do have on this device. I will try to put a link in the description of this video uh, that will bring you to my notes, which also have a bunch of links to information people have put up. Again, a lot of it's old and some of the, the download links don't work, but maybe you can find useful information if you have one of these devices lying around uh, and want to play around with it. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description as well as a link to my Patreon page where you can help support me. Patreon.com 
forward slash metalx1000. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.